a man of many talents, Mr. Drake Milligan. Once I hit about 13, my voice started changing and I could start to kind of look like Elvis and sound like him. Dude, uh, that is unbelievable. Yeah. So I decided I, was, I, I withdrew from the competition. I didn't think I was going to be a songwriter when I moved to Nashville. Up in the backwoods, down in the holler. Hell yeah. Hey, this is Drake Milligan and you're watching Like a Farmer. Hey y'all, it's Pat. Welcome to another episode of Like a Farmer, powered by Ag America. I'm excited about today's guest, a man of many talents, Mr. Drake Milligan. Drake, thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's quite the operation you got going on here. Man, I tell you, <laughs> we've been doing this now for close to 12 months, and I've got such a great team behind me, as you can I mean, you're, you're looking at them right now, but we've been all over the country just interviewing people and celebrating who the farmer is mm -hmm. and also trying to educate people on what you know who feeds them every day who clothes them every day and and that's why i'm excited to have you on the show two reasons number one i think and we talked about it before the cameras started rolling but you you think about a an industry that's kind of bringing people together to celebrate that rural america lifestyle is country music mm -hmm. and i mean you've been on the road with multiple people and you we were just talking about you going to canada with cody and it's yeah. like everywhere you go across the country these people love country music. Oh, yeah. I mean, how cool has that been? Well, across the world. Yeah, correct. Across yeah. the world. I mean, we are, I've been fortunate enough, like, this past year, my stuff's kind of blown up overseas, you know, and gone to – we're going back to – back overseas here in a couple of weeks, going back to London, and, and we got to go to Australia this year, which is crazy. Um, but it's – yeah, it's all across the world. People – I know people resonate it and they resonate with country music, and it is. I mean, it's rural music, and there's – People live in a rural lifestyle everywhere. You're exactly you know? right. And, and we're sitting here in Nashville today, and it's like this has been a city that has brought people together to kind of celebrate that lifestyle. And that's yep. when, you know, Josh Allen, the Buffalo Bills quarterback, mm -hmm. he's in this business with me. And we, we sat down 12 months ago, and we were like, everybody's starting to wear the country, uh, listen to country music again. Everybody wants to wear boots. Everybody wants to drive a truck. Yeah. Everybody wants to be outside. It's like, let's yeah. celebrate this lifestyle. So I'm pumped to have you on the show. Right off the bat. Elvis Presley, man. <laughs> I mean, where does the love come for for the man himself, Elvis? Well, I mean, it started – I mean, I grew up not an Elvis fan. Neither of my parents were Elvis fans. Um, I grew up on, like, you know, old-school country music. I mean, I grew up on my dad's records, my mom's records, which is like, you know, being from Texas, George Strait, uh, Alan Jackson was huge when I was a kid. That was those – those right. That, like, when I think of – you know, music that was is like nostalgic music for me. You know, growing up, it's like Alan Jackson, that uh, under the influence record had like summertime blues and pop a top and all that stuff. Was I mean, I just think of child as that. But when I was about seven, it kind of changed for me. And I was kind of starting. It was kind of the perfect storm. I was starting to get into music. I was starting to want to play the guitar. I had an uncle who was a piano player, and I always looked up to him. And I kind of wanted to do that. And, write papers and when i was a little kid like you know what do you want to be when you grow up and like i want to be a rock star because they get to travel the world oh yeah know? and <laughs> and but i know you know it wasn't serious by any means but i saw an elvis impersonator by total accident this guy carlton hurdle i'm still friends with him he's like six foot seven you know he plays the burger joint you know local burger joint in the hometown we were there by total accident just eating there and i'm, I'm looking at it. you know we're just eating and like oh yeah that was personator and i'm just like what's going on i couldn't take my eyes off it i was like what is he's got these jumpsuits and the songs and i'm like and how old are you at this point in time? seven I okay was, yeah i was seven because back then i mean it seems like every corner block i mean these elvis yeah. impersonator i mean that was the <laughs> thing so i'm i'm i feel like i'm sitting in the damn booth with you i mean you you see somebody yeah. be elvis it was just, just super cool Well, it's a wild phenomenon yeah too. The elvis thing is crazy but I, I yeah just i went home and you know my mom explained to me that you know that wasn't you know, actually, it's kind of like, you know, it's Santa or something. Yeah. It wasn't actually Santa, you know. Hey, Drake, it, I got something real. to tell you. Okay. <laughs> that wasn't Elvis. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and so I'm like, you know, I just started diving in and watching the, watching Elvis's videos and like, you know, becoming a fan of his. That was the first time for me, I think it clicked that that's what I wanted to do. Because I had, I had watched, you know, I grew up going to the Houston Rodeo. That was big for us. My grandparents lived in Houston and. And uh, we would go every year to go see and that, you know, go see like Randy Travis and Allen and Dirk Bentley and stuff there. And I, that was the first time I, I saw somebody really entertain, you know, watching videos of Elvis. And I was born 20 years after he died, but I still felt like he was somehow reaching through that screen and, and you know, grabbing me and shaking mm -hmm. me. So that was like, that was the first time I saw that. I went, that's what I want to do. I want to be like Elvis, you know. And I took it, I took it. 
I took it to the nth degree there and, you know, started, I was wanted to, you know, started with Halloween, dressing up as them, you know, and, and then it eventually my mom got me a karaoke machine. My brother hated it because I would just be there in the living room all day, every day, you know, on the living room coffee table, just trying to be Elvis singing. And then I just, yeah, became, that was my high school job was traveling as, as Elvis. You know, there's a whole world out there of, so where would Festival you, so as a high schooler, your job is to just impersonate yeah. Elvis. Yeah, where yeah. would you go? Uh, I mean, little theaters around Texas too. I do like track shows or then this whole festival. There's a whole festival circuit out there um, of huge Elvis festivals that have competitions and stuff. And you get to take away some money if you win them. And once I, you know, once I hit about 13, my voice started changing and I could start to kind of look like Elvis and sound like him. I started winning some of those and, and take home some money, you know, and that was, that was my summer job. Me and my mom would go on the road and go do that. So it was really cool for me. Dude, you know? that is unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, there's, there's so many things I want to just back up. Number one, <laughs> I love you because you mentioned Alan Jackson. Yeah. I mean, Alan Jackson's in my top three, no matter what the genre. I mean, I love AJ. He's yeah. doing his like last tour. He's going to come to Tampa, my hometown, but I wonder if he needs an opener. Hey, Alan, hit me up, please, please. Alan, hit me up or I'll Alan. hit you up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One of us is going to hit you up. His team, get with your team. Your team, get with his team. But opener right here is a big fan. So the the Elvis thing, though, that's super cool. I mean, and I uh, who was the guy who played Elvis in the movie? The recent movie? The recent movie. The Austin Butler. Okay, Austin yeah. Butler. So when Austin gets done with the movie, I mean, I start watching these interviews, and, like, he's stuck in oh, yeah. Elvis as a – especially on the on the vocal side. So is that something that happened to you? Like you, I mean, you're waking up and you're going to sleep as Elvis, no matter if you're working yeah, or not. Yeah, I mean, I was always, it was kind of something I fell into. You know, if I sat down and, and played a guitar, right? If I, if I sat down on my guitar and was playing songs, it, was, it wasn't usually Elvis songs. It was kind of Elvis. It was my take on them, you know. But I was, I was playing Merle Haggard and Jones and, and Al and stuff. I mean, that's, that's, that's kind of where, like, as an artist, I think my heart lies. But the entertainment aspect of Elvis it was just something I was like, man, I, you know, I'm making money doing this. This is, this is working out for me, you know, why not do it? Um, and I was never on stage thinking, you know, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show tonight. You know, I did this song back in 1956, you know, I was never doing, I was never doing that kind of stuff. It was more like, it was always a tribute, you know, it was always a, a tribute act and, and it was fun. I mean, it was, I got to go, gotta go to nursing homes and go make little ladies happy and pass out the scarves. And it was a, and, and, you know, it, it really taught me a lot about being on stage. Um, and then I went on, you know, come about the end of high school, I was thinking, you know, I was thinking I'm kind of done with the Elvis thing. You know, I I'd kind of started to kind of transition out of it, wanted to do my own thing. I had applied for college. I was going to go out to Texas Tech. All my friends were out there. My brother went out there and, and, uh, you know, we hunt close to there. So I was like, I'm going to go out to Texas Tech and I'm going to maybe start my own band, you know, do whatever. And then my mom found out about a audition on Facebook or the open call audition for a show called Sun Records. Yeah. On CMT. And figured why not? Why not go in there and do it? And they had to, they told me no at first because I was seventeen. Said, no, you can't can't audition. But I had some friends with the Memphis Film Commission. I'd done a short film when I was fourteen, something like that. Uh about Elvis in high school. I'd been casted in this little short film, filmed in Memphis. It was called Nobody, and we knew people with the film commission and asked them, like, hey, I know you're working with these people. Like, can you just let them know I'm serious, you know, mm -hmm. let them in. And, I, you know, they finally said, all right, come on, you know, let them, you know come in and sing a song. Sang a song, sang another song, you know, sing another one, sing another one. And it ended up being the, uh, the executive producer on that show, the guy's Leslie Greif is his name, and he's now my manager. But Leslie, uh, you know, had to kind of hear say, he's like, you know, sing something else, you know, sing, sing another else, sing another one. He's like, sing something that you sing just as you. And I think I sang, don't close your eyes, you know, Keith Whitley. And great. Uh, yeah. And then ended up, you know, did a stay tonight, did a self tape that or did a, you know, a, a screen test kind of thing the next day. And then got a call two weeks later. I was at a golf tournament. I was at my coach's house actually, and just wrecked my truck that day. It was wild. It was the wildest day ever. I was like on the way to my coach. We were all staying at my coach's house up north of Fort Worth and I had, you know, done a U-turn and didn't look behind me and got T-boned mm. and, you know, was still like rattled from that. And I got a call. I was at my coach's house later that day and I'm 
like maybe an hour after that. And you know, like, hey, he's in a conference room. You know, we laugh about it now, but it's like he was in a conference room, everybody on speakerphone, you know, and taking a chance on me who was, you know, a nobody. I was a kid in high school and, you know, with no acting, you know, background or anything like that, you know, just loved Elvis. And, you know, tell me I got the part. And I'm sitting there like, yeah, great, awesome, you know. Yeah, what a day of <laughs> And I'm like, I, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, all the stuff, you know, my life. My life changed there. You know, I left high school after that, you know, to go work on this TV show. And it was it was crazy. And it's it, it's opened up so many doors. I mean, so you just so stopped going to high that. school when you got this gig. Yeah, I left. I left high school. I finished on, on lottery. I got my GED. Yeah. Um, but I was, I was like, you know, it was Valentine's Day of my senior year. So we were almost, you know, through that, getting into that second semester. So I was almost done. And I wanted, I was like, just give me the test now. Just let me, yeah. let me test out again. Just give me, and they were like, no, it's an attendance thing. So I had to drop out. And then, so you, you, you take the gig and immediately you take have to move gig, to yeah, Nashville, pretty right? Pretty much immediately. Well, I, it, we started filming in about late March. We started pre-production. But here in Nashville? It was in Memphis. Memphis, Yeah, okay. we filmed in Memphis. As a seventeen-year-old, leave high school. Now you're yeah. going to become Elvis on a TV yeah. show. And luckily, I got the best parents in the world, who've always been so supportive and kind of just let me do crazy things. My, my dad was always, you know, I'm the weird kid dressed up as Elvis, and he supported all the way. He could have been like, it'd been so easy for him to be like, take off the Elvis stuff. Yeah. Now, when Michael Jackson died, I saw I got like a Thriller jacket and a glove and everything, and he was kind of like, all right. I'm yeah. drawing the line here. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta, at some point, okay? Yeah. Dude, that's so cool because, Drake, you hit it on the head. You've got, once again, I'm going to compliment my team. I mean, the team does a great job. And, and reading and researching and just living vicariously through, whether it's on tour with you or through your social media, like, your taste in country music is old school as it gets. And it's unbelievable. We're talking about monsters. I mean, Merle Haggard. I mean, Mama Tried. Yeah. The King and George Strait, you know, the King mm. just sold out Kyle Field. You see that the other night? Parker over there just killing with it. Park, my guy, he came on the show. I had 111,000 people. Yeah. But on the flip side, on the true entertainment side and getting your fans engaged, mm -hmm. Elvis, there is nobody better. And, yeah. like, if you go and watch one of your shows, like, you try to, whether it's yeah. moving around or engaging with the fans, like, you do that. Yeah. And that's super cool to see. Yeah. I mean, that's just, it, it's kind of my edge, you know, I, I'm always trying to look at it. Like, how can I be that much different, you know, with, with music that I wouldn't say is necessarily all that different. All I'm ever trying to do is do the old school thing, you know, and try to make it new in some way, but try to try to give me some kind of identifying factor, which is, it's a cool, we're at a cool place in country music right now too, where that is available all across the platform. You know, everybody's so unique now. I look at my record label. We got Lanny Wilson. We got who's traditional, but I mean has such a style. Mm -hmm. We got Jelly Roll. You know, I'm on the same level as Jelly Roll, yeah. and it's like, and I mean, just again, his own his own thing, his own style, and and yeah, it's a it's a cool time to be. I think in country music and a part of that because it's open to that now. You know, do you still can you still do like an Elvis voice? Like, can you be like, hey, this is Drake Milligan. You're watching Like a Farmer, but in Elvis? <laughs> I probably could. I lost, the, I lost the lip thing. I used to be able to do the lip thing real good, but I lost that. You want me to do it? You yeah, want me to do it here? That one right here? Hey, this is Drake Milligan, and you're watching Like a Farmer. I love that. Yeah. What's the, what do you mean by the lip thing? Like, is well, you know, he had the lip. He had the little lip yeah. curl thing. I kind of lost that somewhere along the That's way. That's so cool. How long yeah. was the TV show when it came We just it? did one season. Okay. We were, you know, there was plans to do another one, and it was a shame because – we all became such good friends, like the cast and everything. I still talk to everybody that was on that cast. And we had so much fun filming it. And it was, it, it kind of became like my college experience, you know. And now with Leslie as my manager and everything, you know, it's like, it was just, it, it, I don't know. It was just a such a great opportunity for me. And I got to learn so much. Our musical director in that series was a guy named Chuck Mead. Chuck had a great band back in the day here, BR549. They kind of revitalized the whole Broadway thing, you know, Roberts. And mm -hmm, they kind yep. of brought the whole thing up. The rockabilly kind of stuff of the late 90s when that was really happening. And Chuck's such a country music historian and, and a great singer and guitar player and musician. And I just kind of followed him around like a puppy dog and just tried to take everything I could out of that. And then even, even after the show, I mean, that opened up the door. You know, I'm, I'm, I, I kind of I try to go out to L.A. for a little bit. And for somebody like me, I mean, I grew up I, I grew up, you know, 
south of Fort Worth. We grew up on yeah. land, and like I, you know, I like to have my space. Even here, you know, I tried to live in town for a little bit, and I, I couldn't do it. You, you go know, back. To I got I had to get out. Of, I had to get out of town. You know. Yeah. And I tried to move it to LA for a little bit. Try to, I was like, man, this acting thing, you know, um, this was this was fun, you know. This is like, I, and the money was good. I'm like, I, I want to do more of this. And I, it, I, I spent about three months, two months out in LA, and I was like, this is not, this is ain't it for me, you know. And and I was just like, I need to focus on one thing, and that was music. So when I did move to Nashville, um, a guy, or kind of in between that, a guy named Tony Brown had reached out. And for those who don't know who Tony Brown is, Tony. I mean, he played, he actually played keys with Elvis back in the day. For the last couple of years, Elvis' life played keys for him and, and played like the Stamps Quartet and stuff. But Tony went on to be one of the greatest producers um, this town's ever known. Produced now 20 records on George Strait. Uh, produced those early Vince Gill records, mm -hmm. Marty Stewart, Rodney Crowell. Um, I mean, the list goes on. And he had reached out. And had seen me on the show and loved what I did with Elvis. You know, he had a great relationship with Elvis and loved what I did. So it was cool. And I'm, and I'm looking at the emails going, the same, you know. And in my world, there's Elvis and George Strait, right? 100%. That's, yeah. that's it for me. Yeah. And Tony's, I mean, got connections to both of them. And so I ended up coming here and starting to work with Tony. And Tony did my first record, which is really cool. So, so when you, and I can't wait to even get into me. I could sit here and talk to you about Elvis yeah. all day. Did you at one point stop and maybe think about trying to do the the newest Elvis movie? Like I mean, uh, I, I auditioned I would, for it. Yeah. For oh, sure. you did. Oh yeah, I went out to L.A. And, and you know went in with casting directors, did a full audition. Um, I don't know if I was right for it. I, you know, what Austin did to play Elvis all the way through like that. You know, because I played him very early on, mm -hmm. very young. Yep. Um, you know, high school. Through about 20 years old, and I was, you know, I was 17, so it was a perfect kind of range for me. You know, Elvis went through such a change in those 20 years. Um, I don't know if I was the right. You know, he did an awesome job. He did a great. I mean, job. as an Elvis fan, I watch him and go, man, he studied. He looked. He like. He really dove in. Um, so that that was cool to see. So I don't. I don't think I was right for it. Yeah, so, obviously. So I want to let's back up a little bit. I want to talk about, and you mentioned a little bit growing up in Texas, mm -hmm. and you talk about. I mean, Texas is its own country. I say this all the time, and we were talking about Ag America earlier, the presenting sponsor of the show, and and you know, Ag America is a financial institution mm -hmm. for rural America, farmers, ranchers all over the country, and and we do a lot of business as an Ag America in Texas. It's its own country. I mean. Yeah. And I feel that's the same way with country music, too. I mean, they, they love their, their singers, performers that come out of that state. I mean, how was it growing up in, in Texas? And you've talked about your parents already. I know you came from a great home, but how was that growing up in that area? I mean, it's, Fort Worth especially, I think, is a hotbed for a lot of really good country music. Um, and it's just sort of surrounded by it. I don't know. People ask me like, what 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 is what's the whole Texan thing about? Like, what what is it? Come on, guys. it's a thing. It's, yeah. it's a thing, and I'm. I mean, I live here now, but I mean, I'm gonna move back to Texas, you know, as soon as I can, you know. And right now, it's great because I can be here when I'm off the road and riding, and you know, my band's here and everything. But at some point, I'm gonna move back to Texas. Um, it's just like when you cross that line. For me, it's like as soon as we're driving back to Texas, or even when I plane lands or anything, it's like a weight that's lifted off my shoulders. Like, man, I'm I'm home. Um, but it, it, Fort Worth is just like a hotbed, you know, there's so much history there. Um, I mean, you go back to like Willie Nelson, um, uh, spent a lot of time in Fort Worth, Roger Miller's from Fort Worth. Um, Bob Wills, of course, like the Western swing yeah. thing, which I'm a huge fan of. Um, it has a lot of historical ties to Fort Worth and it's still, you know, Fort Worth's always kind of been a traditional city and it's still kind of holding on to those kind of traditional roots, you know, you go to the stockyards and everything. And it, Fort Worth really has never forgotten where it came from. Um, Dallas is a little bit different story, you know. They're 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 the they're the hip trying to be happy yep. in the city. Um, but Fort Worth has really never forgot its roots, and and I think that shows in a lot of the music too that comes out of it. Um, I know with my music, even my first record, we called it Dallas Fort Worth for that reason. You know, half the record was kind of the more kind of me trying to be a little more polished. You know, try to you know maybe write for radio, and then half of it was kind of paying homage to my roots and that was the Fort Worth side of it which was my favorite side of the record so um but that, that Texas scene just growing up around great country music you know you turn on the radio there you know they're going to play George Strait every hour you 100%. know 
uh, growing around the Texas scene, you know, going to places like Billy Bob's, watching Pat Green, Aaron Watson, uh, Wade Bowen, Randy Rogers, like all these guys. I mean, that was – There were some legends that came out of that. I mean, yeah, just sitting Yeah, but in high here, school. In high yeah. school, that was like – and they're, that's like our thing. You know, we go to see them, and it's like there is a lot of pride that we've taken. Like, those, those are our guys, you know. And that's why it's so cool to see. You know, we've been on the road with Cody Johnson. And, I've, you know, I've watched Cody in probably like, I mean, 500-person rooms in Fort Worth, you know, in like high school and stuff or middle school even. And then now to be opening, opening for him now and, and watch him in, in arenas. And, yeah, I mean, playing stadiums and stuff now, it's like just to see that, you know, it's like, man, I was, you know, and, and you feel pride too. I was like, man, I was there. And it takes me back, you know, I watch him from side stage at night. And I go, man, I, I feel like I'm – you know, back in high school again, you know, at the Cody Johnson show. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, but when, I mean, when COVID hit, I look back at it as a kind of a blessing. I mean, it, it, a lot of crazy stuff happened. I mean, I lost my grandpa during that time. But I got to spend so much time out there, time out there with my grandpa, right? Spend that whole, and, and really just, I mean, I stayed out there. And we kind of, I mean, our kind of camp situation is, my dad runs a scrapyard, my grandpa started. And, and that's kind of the family business, my brother is going into it now and and we have converted all these big semi trailers out there it's kind of a big trailer park we took them i mean put got plumbing and ac and tvs a whole nine yards in there and uh it's just it's just great to get out there you're out in the middle of six thousand acres and out in the middle of nothing and it's i don't know that's 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 where i feel most kind of inspired so i'm, I'm glad i got that time to you know spend with my grandpa and be out there hunting i felt like i recharged for now you know we came out of covid finally and 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 stuff kind of started taking off for me. I've been on the road constantly ever since and working and, and being out there. It's kind of like I got all that charging time so that I could go out and, and, and be on the road. 100%. Do all those things that it takes. Hey, y'all, it's Pat, and I'm here to talk about one of my favorite companies in the world, Ag America. Ag America is your go-to financial partner for all things agriculture. As the largest independent financial firm dedicated to rural America, Ag America is changing the game of ag lending and leveling up financing options for farmers, ranchers, and landowners all across the nation. And I'll let you in on a little secret. The thing that sets this company apart from the rest is the people. They understand firsthand the unique needs of American farmers and ranchers because many of them grew up on farms themselves. They take a farmer-focused approach to finance, prioritizing relationships over transactions to help you build a stronger financial foundation for not only yourself, but for your family. So whether you're looking to buy land or secure working capital, Ag America has your back. Visit agamerica.com today to learn more and see how they can help you achieve long-term financial success. Because don't ever forget, when farmers thrive, we all do. What, this is so cool just learning how you grew up, too. And you know you come from a hard-working, blue-collar family. I mean, owns a scrapyard. Your brother's getting into it. Like, what does your family say to you just over the years on how – I mean, you came come from Texas. You don't know what direction you're going. You're, you're at a damn burger joint, and you see a 6'5". Probably he's got a beer gut. Maybe not even look as <laughs> close to his Elvis. But anyways, and then that you, you find your dream there. And now look at you. You're in Nashville. You're getting into the, the country music scene in a huge way. And I'm excited to talk about that. But, like, what does your family say about all that? Uh, well, they've been nothing but supportive. Yeah. And I mean, I've got I, – I was lucky with – I'm really lucky to have parents that are, like, great parents, supportive, but very smart people too. And just funny people, great people to be around. Like there's a lot of humor in my house, you know, growing up and, and I, you know, they, they taught me a lot about hardware. My mom's a veterinarian at her own practice for 30 years, small animal vet. Um, so I kind of got to see, I mean, I got to see a lot of that. They both kind of have their own businesses and of course have helped me a lot out because some of you don't realize, man, when you're going into being an artist, I talked to a lot of people about it. You don't realize that you have to be a CEO of your own company. Entrepreneur too. You yeah. do. You have to be like you and and a lot of us, including myself, are not the, the, the you would not want me running any kind of, you know, company, you know, out there, you know. I'm like I'm like ah, oh, fine. A few dollars here. Why well, wouldn't I wouldn't have ever made it in the scrap business cuz I'm like ah, oh, what's a few bucks here? If I, I give him some more money. I'm like up. I'm like whatever, you know. Yeah. But, you know, my brother's built for it. My brother, you know, he's like 
nickel and dime until he dies, you know. He's, <laughs> he's like that. But that's why he's good at it and why he'll be successful at it. But And how my grandpa was, too. I mean, but, yeah, you don't realize that you're going you're gonna to be the CEO of your own company. And they've helped me, I mean, in, in so many, in, in every way, you know, helped me kind of navigate uh, the world of kind of running your own business. That's fantastic. And I want to get into the, the country music side of, of your career. But first, I want to play a game. All right. This game's on. called This or That, and it's presented by the one and only Ag America. So I'm super pumped. It's actually, I got to... I gotta put a Lucy in for. I'm actually not <laughs> sponsored by Lucy, but I'm a. I had a. I was here. When was it? I guess last week, two weeks ago, with the the bussing with the boys. Oh yeah. Have you seen any of their stuff? Like I haven't. Will and Taylor, yeah. they're barking. I know they are. Yeah. And they like, they got me on these Lucys. Unbelievable. And like the flavor. This is an espresso yeah. flavor. Do you do any of this type of stuff? Well, it's a new thing for me. I yeah. I swear I was never gonna do it, and here I am. That's what, what the music business will do to What's me. your go to? The Zins right now. Yeah, what flavor? Yeah. Cool man. Cool, cool man. Sixes. Three or sixes? Sixes. I'm trying to get off. Of, I found some, and we we're over in overseas. We we're in like Switzerland. I found some. I mean, they have they go crazy. They go. There. I mean, there's a million they had, different styles. I, they had the lowest ones they they had were like nines, or I, I got some elevens. They were like a different. They're black black currant. Yeah, ice flavors, icy black currant or something. I was like, I got to get these. Dude, you will like, not catch me put a six. And yeah. I, I have, I usually do threes. And uh, Parker, your boy Parker McCollum came on the show, and first thing you said, threes, huh? That's cute. And this dude, I mean, he probably has two or three sixes, and he loves his zims. Yeah. He, but he's a six. He's a six oh, yeah. cinnamon guy. They had some out there that are. Uh, I, they had some out there 33s. Yeah, you're insane. 33s. I'd be dude. scaling this damn building yeah. we're in on that. Yeah. So back to the game, this or that. I'm going to give you two options. You tell me what you would rather go with. So the two kings, we've been talking about them all show. Who would you rather go on tour with, Elvis or George Elvis. Strait? Oh, I mean, no. Elvis. Yeah. Elvis. No doubt? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, El yeah. I mean, that's. You're taking Elvis, Elvis, Elvis over George Strait? I mean, it's you're. Elvis. I think wow. George Strait would choose Elvis over. George you think? Strait. I don't know. But it's Elvis, man. I mean, yeah. I mean, George would be the dream. Now, of course, that's a more attainable goal now. But For sure, yeah. But, and Elvis might still be out there somewhere. Maybe he'll announce his next tour. I don't know. Do you believe in that? I mean, no, that I don't think so. I've talked to enough people who knew Elvis. and So, in your mind, though, you kind of maybe thought that he lived yeah, maybe. on it's an island. It's fun to think about. I mean, it is. Somebody that loves Elvis so much, you know. But you're pretty much about. confirming, like, hey, he's not alive. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't buy into it. Okay. Still well, that this is actually, I'm glad we talked about it because I still, in my mind, thought maybe because of all the stuff that you read about and see on the TV, and now, yeah. I mean, I've never seen an Elvis lover like you in my life. So now you're telling, you're <laughs> confirming it. So I believe it. So, damn, we might have to have a moment of silence for that one. <laughs> well, I think he could, he might have could have been for a while. I don't think he's still. If he if he was. You know, still around. I don't. I don't think he would still be around today. Okay, he'd be pretty old now. Uh, I probably know this after talking to you for a little bit. Now you you've lived in both of the places now, but you Nashville or Texas? Where would you go? Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I love. Now I wouldn't be who I am or who I'm going to be without Nashville. Just with the music business here, the writers that are here, the the industry that's here. I mean, the best musicians and the best songwriters in the world are here. Yeah. So, I mean, but. Yeah, Texas all the way. Because I, and I think too, I mean, I look at my favorite artists have always kind of been outside of Nashville too. I think, I think you have to, totally. you have to maintain your own um, identity. And it's hard to do in a place like this. You know, it, 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 it's a great place for young artists to, you know, find their thing. But I think you got to, you got to hold on to some sort of identity to, to really kind of, I don't know, stay true to yourself and stick out in this town. It's easy to, it's easy to get caught into whatever Nashville is at the moment. You know, it's easy to try to chase that. But if you're living outside, anywhere outside of it, you go, oh, there's a whole world out here of normal people, you know. So, you know, Texas, yeah, one of these days I'll, I'll move back to Texas. That's a great statement. You know who that sounded like um, with Riley, Riley Green. So mm -hmm. Riley, great friend of mine, he, he opened up this season. And he said the same thing. It's like you still got to hold on to a little bit of home. And he still has a beautiful farm back home in yeah. Alabama that he still goes to a lot. Parker says the same thing. I mean, obviously, these people that have come on the show, Ian Munzik, who mm -hmm. I just think is a complete monster in the country music scene, but he brings that Western yep. style to Nashville. So that makes total sense. It yeah. really does. And we play we play rural music for yep. like people who live in rural areas. And you know, Nashville is a huge city now. 
And it's like, if you want to live in the biggest, one of the biggest growing cities in the world and, and try to try to somehow connect yourself to a rural audience, you know, it's a tough thing to do. So spot on. I yeah. love that. All right. Um, would you rather perform as a singer on stage or an actor on camera? If you had to choose a singer on stage. Yeah. 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 I think I made that, I made that decision, you know, after, I mean, while I was kind of went to LA, I thought I wanted to do a little more acting. And I was like, man, I, I was just, I was just distracted all, every day by music. You know, I could sit there, I, I could sit there and play my guitar all day. I could wake up and start trying to write songs and do all that and work at it. I didn't really know how to work at acting. It's like, what do I, you know, who am I going to be today? Or, you know, it's like, what, yeah. how do you, I, I didn't, I didn't make the connection of how I really devote all my hours to, to acting. I loved it. I, I really, really loved the craft of it. Had a great director on Sun Records, which helped me really get into that and really feel like I was becoming an actor. But I, yeah, I mean, it, music is, it just makes a lot more sense to me than acting, you know? So I still want to do, definitely want to do more acting because yeah. it's fun. And then and I, and I have a similar approach to it the way I have, you know, music. I kind of tied all those things in, but um, yeah. Music, music, music all the way for me. That's all. And that leads to another great segment that we're going into. And the country music, I mean, what you're doing now has been fantastic. And we can sit here and talk about the legends that you seem to be looking up to, especially the ones that come from your state. At what point did you know, like, hey, country music is what I want to do? I don't, you know, it was, it's always kind of been where my heart is, you know. Like those, those, those first records I fell in love with, again, Alan and Randy Travis and Straight. I think it was probably it was a little bit after Sun Records. I mean, after meeting Chuck and getting to know Tony, and I, and I saw I saw the door opening. You know, I saw the door to Nashville, and I saw kind of I saw kind of the tides turning too. You know, with country music and that the traditional sound was kind of starting to really become more and more popular. More and more people are liking it, and and still that exactly. door's still kind of opening to that. You know. And I just, I just kind of saw it. And I said, "Man, you know, why not? Why not go for it? Why not try, try to be one of those people who are kind of bringing back that sound, you know?" And it's not nothing like intentional with me. It's not like I'm sitting here going, you know, I'm playing a real country music and you know, everything yeah. else is not. It's it's more just like that's my influences. That's where I'm coming from. You know, that's just it's 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 what I'm inspired by. You know, what makes me want to make music is going, I mean, when I get uninspired, I go listen to Merle Haggard and I get inspired again. Yeah. You know? 100%. So it's, that's just the influence there for me. So, and we talked a little bit about it before we sat down. It's like, I mean, everybody's, uh, it's open arms. Whoever wants to come to country music. I mean, you've seen yep. what Shabuzi and hell post oh, yeah. Malone, all these guys are yeah. getting into it. So it's cool. And it's great. Yeah. And it's great. But it's, but I think, it, and that's a beautiful thing about country music. It's a big, big wide range of music and, and, uh, there's room for, there's room for Shibuzi and there's room for me and there's room for, you know, everything in between. Yeah. And remind me again, because I know you've been on a few of the shows, but I guess it was 2018. You're on American Idol, right? I was right? on American Idol. Audition for American okay. Idol. Okay. Yeah, I did the audition and it was, it was kind of in that period where I'd spent some time in LA and I was like, man, I really want to start going for music. I got the opportunity to audition for that. I figured, why not go for it? And did the audition and then kind of in that interim, between the audition, you know, got made it through, right? Sang a George Strait song, you look so good in love, Ooh, you know? Great. Luke Bryan said I was uh, cowboy cool, you know, whatever. I <laughs> love uh, that. And uh, it was, it was, and I, you know, made it through, but it, it kind of in between going there and then going to actually, you know, going to Hollywood. Hold on um, on that thought. I mean, the impersonations that you love doing, I mean, you're, <laughs> The Luke Bryan one, I just had to kind of <laughs> recirculate that one. That's fantastic, by the way, but keep going. <laughs> um, uh, but in between that that kind of period of, you know, do not issue, go to Hollywood, I decided, man, I am not ready for this. I had done no work writing my own songs, um, really no work playing gigs, playing live shows as myself, right? Not, in, you know, as Elvis. Uh it's such a weird statement, right? Uh, and I, 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 I hadn't I hadn't laid the foundation. I'd done no work, and it wouldn't be fair to myself to throw myself up on that stage and you know try to you know trial by fire kind of thing. You know, um, 
so I decided I was I, I withdrew from the competition, and I moved to Nashville. And you know, I was they they luckily they aired my audition, which is great because you know I've got a little bump on the socials and everything from there. So it kind of you know gave me a little little you know bump from that. And and I'm and it was a good decision because I got to come here and I spent really f- about four or five years just writing writing songs every day, um, diving into studio work. I mean that was really where I built it all. And and, and in the meantime, putting together a band, starting to try to play some gigs. You know, got hooked up with Broken Bow and Broken Bow Records and, and started. And that's who you signed your first yes, deal with? Yes, I signed a development deal with them. I don't even know what year it was, but they were early, very early on. Okay. And it was a development deal, which was great because it, it just gave me the you know their backing so that I could get in any writing room I wanted to and learn from great songwriters. That's what I wanted to do was find these old school songwriters, guys and girls who had written my favorite songs, you know, written songs for George and Alan, mm-hmm. Brooks and Dunn and like – they're all still around here and still kicking ass, you know? And so uh, I wanted to learn from them and learn how to write a song and was lucky enough to do so. And then the opportunity came along. You know, I've got, I've got this first record kind of ready to go. Again, we talked about when COVID hit and kind of had to take some time back and really finished the rest of that, what it ended up becoming my first record, you know, writing that uh, and getting in the studio and finishing it. And then the opportunity came along for America's Got Talent, and I, and I was, I was, I was skeptical at first, because I'm going, you know, I, I, I've, you know, I did the thing, I, I went to the American Idol thing, I decided it wasn't for me, you know, is this going to be hypocritical for me to go back on the show now and say, you know, oh, wait, you know, I'm going to do it now, but I was ready, you know, I was, I, I'd, I'd done the work, I'd laid the foundation, uh, I had a, a, what I thought was a really good record ready to go, and thought man what a great way to promote this and get that break you know, it's hard for anybody out there you know it's a, it's a weird time to be it's, it's a great time to be a, a young artist i think because you've got like tiktok and stuff and you've you know you're able to do that but for somebody like me who's not really my i don't, I don't have the tiktok mind so much you know i could go up there and sing songs all day but it's not you know you're not a tiktoker I'm not, is I'm what not, you're telling yeah, me yeah i'm not i'm not all the way great at it like some some artists are and so I thought, man, what a great opportunity to get in front of millions of people, you know. And it was funny. So my manager Leslie is, you know, in the film and TV world, is friends with Gene Simmons. And Gene Simmons was actually kind of the one who talked me into doing America's Got Talent because Gene's a smart guy, and I've got to spend a little time with him. And we called. We were all have this big meeting at Leslie's place in California, and deciding if we were going to do the show or not. And I was like, well, let's just call Gene and see what he thinks. Get his idea. I'm like, yeah, great. You know, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Just little subtle yeah, flex exactly. right there. <laughs> and, and he's like, so he's like, well, get his, you know, he's like, here's how I see it. You can either get on the road and go play for 500 people at a time, 100 people at a time, whatever it is, for six years. Build up an audience that way. Great. A lot of money, a lot of time goes into that. A lot of, you know. Or you can get in front of 6 million, 10, 10 million people in one, one night. Either works and you're you're doing great, or it doesn't, and you're back where you started. You go play for those, you know, hundred people at a time, and that was, made a lot of sense to me, you know. And it was a great opportunity. I got to play my songs. I got to have my band up there. I got to tell my story, and uh, and I had a great team around me, you know, kind of ready to go. It was just a great platform for me to kind of jump off of, and the audience for that is a lot of middle America. And, and a lot of people overseas, too. So I got to go instantly, really saw it. And I would go do the show, I'd go on the road, and go, to the, go back to the show and go back on the road and saw it, actively saw it, people showing up to, sh- to shows all of a sudden. I'm going, man, this is, this is working. That's so. fantastic. And you mentioned you, you spent a lot of time doing songwriting. With, it, and, like, in your mind, did you ever think, okay, songwriting is just going to be my my ceiling when it comes to country music and I'm not going to sing or a little bit. And funny enough, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think I was going to be a songwriter when I moved to Nashville. Um, you know, I thought I was, you know, I mean, George Strait famously, you know, such a great song picker, you know, didn't write a lot, a lot of those hits, wrote a few of those hits, but a lot of those hits were written by, you know, song songwriters in Nashville. And, I thought that's what I was going to do, you know, find all these songs and do that. But I had to find my kind of own thing, you know. Songwriting, once I got into it, it was the discovery of finding my own sound and finding, you know, 
taking all these influences that I have and putting them together, taking some of that Elvis influence, you know, and putting that into there, taking some of the George influence, you know, the old country, Western swing and stuff, and putting those all together to make my kind of own unique sound, you know? Um, and that's really where I fell in love with was trying to take that. And I became, I still wouldn't call myself a great songwriter, but I, I've really, I've really kind of gotten the hang of being a great co-writer. Um, and always showing up with ideas, knowing what I like, what I want to do, um, you know, and, and being able to kind of cast songwriters, you know, taking an idea to somebody who, oh, this would be a perfect idea for so-and-so. And just being, you know, supportive of what they do, you know, because I get to sit back and watch them like, oh, my God, you know, write these great songs. Some of these guys out here, it's, guys it's and crazy. girls are just unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, right with guys like Marv Green. Marv Green's one of those. He's written a ton of, like, George Strait songs, wrote Amazed, Lone Star. I mean, some huge songs. Great song right great there. Great song, great song. And I watch somebody like him, and it's just, it blows me away. Because he can take an idea, I can take an idea in, and he's like, yep. And boom, and can like work so much faster for me. And it's like, man, it's it's crazy to watch them do that. The, the guys and girls have been doing it for so long that, that it's just second nature to them. We'd like to take a minute to talk about Blue Otter sunglasses. Blue Otter sunglasses are the shades of choice for country superstars like Luke Combs, Cody Johnson, Riley Green, and Hardy. With Carl Zeiss scratch-resistant lenses, Blue Otter has partnered with Ag America to create the Leica Farmer frames, which benefit farmers and ranchers in rural communities. 10% of each purchase of the Leica Farmer Blue Otter sunglasses goes to Ag America Giving. Go to BlueOtterPolarized.com and search Leica Farmer. You can also go to likeafarmer.com and click on merch. You have such a dynamic like view when it comes to songs and, and performers. I mean, the, the people that we've talked about so far from Lone Star to Merle to the King, both <laughs> Kings, like, I mean, I love, what's your go-to karaoke song? Oh, right now it's uh, Hillbilly Deluxe, <sighs> Rooks and Dunn. See, that like, gets those are my guys. Up in the backwoods, down in the holler. Yeah, Hell yeah. Out. I mean, those guys, oh my gosh. Yeah. Great, great stuff. So, America's Got Talent 2022, correct? Mm -hmm. And then that same year, you dropped your first album. Dropped the, the, the day after the finale. Okay. The, the, night, the night after the finale. And you, what did you place in America's Got Talent? Like, third. Okay, third. And then the next day, boom, Dallas-Fort Worth. Mm -hmm. And how, yeah. I mean, how did that feel? It's great. It was great. I mean, it like got to see it, you know, go up the iTunes charts and do that whole thing. And it just felt great because there's so much work went into that record and so many nights sitting there wondering if I was ever going to get those songs out to the world, you know? Um, and I was proud of it, you know, and I was, I was lucky to be in a position like that where I got to be on that show. And I didn't feel like I, I didn't, I didn't feel like I compromised a whole lot. You know, I felt like i made a record that I would have been proud of when I was 10 and I'm proud of now. And hopefully I'll be proud of it when I'm, you know, 50, you know? So that was a great feeling just to get that out there and see people reacting to it and see people all over the world, um, reacting to, you know, that kind of traditional sound. And I love hearing people. I get a lot of people come to shows like, man, I'm not, I'm not a country fan, but I saw you on America's Got Talent. And now I am, you know, and they hear me talk about Merle Haggard or, or Jones or any of these guys. And then they, like, man, I've started digging in that stuff, and I like it, you know? Yeah. Uh, that's what's cool for me to see. Is the new people coming in. Because you know for a fact that, yeah, I mean, you you've people, got the traditional guys that just yeah, love and, you. And, well, that's a hard, hard crowd to please, too. 100%. You know? I mean, myself included, you know? I look at anybody who's coming back in saying, you know, doing the traditional, I'm going, are you really? But, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, there's a lot of great young artists doing it now, which is cool to see. Um, Zach Top, one of those guys out there who's, Crushing it. Great. Crushing it. Yeah. Um, Jake Worthington, Emily Ann Roberts. There's so many great kind of traditional artists right now, young artists that are killing it. That's cool to see. Where so when you drop that out, Dallas Fort Worth, that's the name of it. Like what does that mean to you to to stay with your roots and not go outside of of what we're calling country music, which we're all fans of, but you're staying to your roots and that's what I love and that I mean I'm glad that you're on the show today because it's like we started this show to celebrate people in rural America that stay to their roots yep. in hopes to shine a light on an industry that just doesn't get any light shed on it. We can talk about that forever, but you're sticking to your roots, which is super cool. I mean, how important yeah. is that to you during that album release, but also moving forward? 
Uh, you know, it's just it's just what I love. You know, I, there's a I don't know if you know that there's a famous Waylon Jennings quote, and I don't know if I can say it on here. Yes, but, you can, okay. and I can't wait for it. But he's you know famous Waylon Jennings quote of you know I couldn't go pop if you shut a firecracker on my ass and back me up against a fire. You know, and but it's but it, it, it's Spot just on. it's just who it's it's what I it's the music I, I love all kinds of music. And I'm not saying, I'm not going to go out there and say I'm the most traditional guy out there. There's, you know, there's a lot of them do it. I would just try to do it. I'm, I'm trying to do it somehow in a new way, you know, in a fresh kind of way. Um, I, it's just, it's just, I can't, I, I wouldn't be any good at making pop music or pop leaning music or anything like that. I don't, I, I think I can, I could definitely see myself going in on some more pop tracks. I would love to bring my thing into that, mm -hmm. you know, take taking my kind of country thing and, and bringing it to a pop track or you know, ADM track, whatever it is. I don't know. It, you know, good music's good music. So, um, I, it's just, it's just kind of who I am at this point. You know, I don't think uh, it's not, it's not really something I'm trying to do. It's just something I'm doing. You're sticking to your roots. Yeah. I mean, more recently, the EP jukebox songs i mean jukebox I've, songs, yeah. I've been i've been jamming to that on my on my flight up here i mean that's been fantastic how do you yeah. feel about that project it's been great i got to work with trent woolman on this who i've been a fan of for a while fellow texan guy he's from out in dixon dickens texas okay which not a lot of people know about dixon dickens texas there's it's like, so you it's could, way out there out towards lubbock it's out kind of where we hunt the first time i met him I'm like there's no way you're from dickens nobody's from dickens you know <laughs> um but he's he's great he's produced all of cody's records um and it's been great to work with him on this uh, i've got to cut some like outside songs which has been fun uh songs that i didn't write that i can it's kind of become a new thing of you know i watched cody do it recently you know taking all these outside songs and making them his own you know it's cool to see and uh and i've gotten to do that with these songs and take them and kind of make some of these songs my own and it's and it's fulfilling because i can sit down and I'm like man i have a thing now i have a I have, I have a, you know, my own thing I can do. And, and it's, it's a, it's a good feeling because I feel like that can lead to a long lasting career, you know? And on, on the EP, who, did you write all the songs? Or with I wrote song? one of the songs, okay. but I couldn't forget. Yeah. With Mark Green. Yeah. And Derek Barr. What's your favorite song on the EP? You think if you had to choose one? Uh, I love, I got a problem was one of the, was the first one we cut off that, off the EP. And it was the first outside song I've ever cut. And it was being a song that I didn't write, and it was I, I, it was just a great feeling. I remember getting that song, loving it. Um, you know, listen to the demo, which was kind of just a basic kind of demo, and I I was like, man, I love this song. I don't quite know what you know how it's going to sound with me. And I remember just sitting down with my guitar and picking it out, learning it, and all of a sudden. In 30 minutes, I had that song. I was like, this is my song. It's a hit. And well, I just I felt like, man, this, this feels like my song. Um, I think I think this is somebody, something that other people are going to like. You know, I think my fans are going to like this song. And and sure enough, we've been on the road, and people have been singing along to it everywhere. And, yeah. So that's that's been a great one. It was just kind of a, I guess, a turning point for me, I felt like, you know, internally. Um, it just right felt good about that so like if i could yeah. if i could have one moment in life dude i grew up and i've always wanted to just be like a like a, a country music singer and like one day i just want to be on stage and i want to sing a song and it won't be one of my songs it might be like a you know a sweet caroline yeah or any brooks and dunn you hit it right on the head i'm a big jimmy buffett guy too so you know one of those and just hear people sing back that's got to be an unbelievable feeling yeah it's the best the best feeling in the world man it really is and just to get to I just look out every night, you know, we're on the road and we, we, the great part about where I'm at right now, every venue we play is different. You know, I go play arenas with Cody, you know, open up for him, gain a lot of new fans. You know, most of those people don't know who I am. And I just love at the end of the night hearing, you know, man, I had no idea who you were, but I'm, I've downloaded your record. And that's what I love. I love seeing that. And it's a different challenge too, of how do I, you know, how do I approach this crowd? You know, do, I don't want to, you don't want to come off too strong, you know, you don't want to, but you want to, bring them in, you know, by the end of your, you know, my 25 minute set, you know, um, or we go play, you know, back, go back home to Billy Bob's Fort Worth, which I get to play a bunch now. And it's like hometown crowd, hometown crowd yeah. and always so special. And it's like, all right, I've already, I've already won them over. You know, how do I, how do I seal the deal here? Um, or just playing like, we'll go to little clubs wherever, you know, and, um, 
and it's just always cool to see who shows up and and what stories they have about how they've you know used my songs whether it's man i sit on the tractor and listen to you all day or or you know me and my wife danced to your song at our, at our wedding and or you know there's some of this one old man you know i still tear up think about it he came up to me one time after the show tears in his eyes and he and he's going man i he's like don't look down i got a song don't look down it's very kind of elvisy kind of roy overson vibe and he's like He's like, man, I listen to that song. I think of my wife every time I lost her, you know, however many years ago. And it's like, we'd always dance. And she'd, we always just be right there. And he's like talking to me. And I'm like sitting there Dude. bawling while this guy's telling me this. You know, it's those kind of stories, though, are what keep you keep you going. You know, keep those late nights on the road, you know, the grind of it all. Those are what keep you, keep me inspired and getting that energy, you know. I've heard Cody talk about it. The times when he goes on stage, he's like, man, I... There was a show not too long ago. I can't remember where it was. I talked to him early in the day. He's like, man, I'm just so tired today. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if I'm getting sick. And he's like getting IVs and stuff. He's like, I just don't. And I was like, just get out there on that stage, and I bet you feel better. And sure enough, he got on that stage that night. And, of course, just boom. boom. The, but the crowd is just like, boom. And he said, man, it's like that crowd just lift you up, you know. So it's a great feeling. It's crazy. I mean, and y'all, y'all do it. Y'all are appreciative of it. It's crazy what those fans bring to y'all, and, and obviously yeah. vice versa. But fans mean a lot. It's so cool to see like the stepping stones in your career so far. I mean, we talked about the debut album, this new EP, one of the playing the Grand Ole Opry. I mean, when you think about a kid, when you being a kid, when you move to Nashville, I'm sure. You know, you've got checklist items, and playing the Grand Ole Opry was one of them. I mean, how was that experience? It's it was great. I, and as a fan of like country music history, because um, I really dove into like the history of this town and country music itself when I when I came here, because I started realizing all the behind the scenes people, the, the musicians and the songwriters and the producers and the engineers and the studios and and. Start, you start realizing why you like a record because so-and-so wrote this song or so-and-so played on it. And the, the history that's there at the Opry is, is I mean, it's, 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 the, it's the place, you know. And to, to kind of be a part of that is really cool, you know. And that first, I mean, that first, that debut is so, like, it's all, it was so, for me, it was so crazy. Getting to go back now has been my favorite. The first one, though, I mean, what happened? Like, how does that even work? Is there... I when I think about the call to go mm-hmm. play in the Grand Ole Opry, it's like the guy, who's the guy that shows up at the uh, the football <laughs> players' houses and rooms, and half of that shit looks so staged. Yeah. Like, dude, you you just have some random dude roll up to Randy Moss's house and knock on the door and say, "Hey, Randy, you're in the Hall of Fame." Yeah. Like a little bit of that might be staged, but it, like that's kind of what I feel. It's like there's a certain individual that calls to say, "Hey, you're playing the Grand Ole <laughs> Opry." Is that how that goes? No. Man, I feel bad. I don't know if I remember exactly when I got the invite. I kind of just found out, like, okay, we're playing the Opry. You know, great. Um, I don't know if I remember exactly how it happened. Somebody will probably remind me of that after yeah. this. But, uh, but it's, yeah, it's a, just a great feeling. But it, it, there's so much going on with that debut, and it's just like it's so nerve-wracking. Um, and you've played it how many times now? I played it four times now. Okay. So yeah. what's been the coolest experience so far? Getting planning? to go back. Getting to go back and be feel like I'm a Every time I go back, it's like the people that work there recognize me now. And I get to know people. And I see, get to hang out with country music legends, you know, backstage. And it's always such an open door kind of family atmosphere back there. And everybody's just hanging out. Now, that, to me, is like that. that is the coolest thing about the opera is getting to hang, hang out back there and feel like, I'm becoming part of this family that, you know, this country music family. Um, and to feel that more and more as I go back, that's, that's the coolest thing for me. That's fantastic. Yeah. So, I mean, hell man, we've been talking about these stepping stones. that's leading to a fantastic country music career, but like what's next for Drake Milligan? Like, I know you have that checkbox somewhere. I mean, what else needs to be checked off and, and what do you have coming up? And yeah, I mean, where I'm at right now, I'm, I feel so, I mean, blessed to be where I'm at. You know, so far I go out on the road and I, you know, we're sell, we're starting to sell tickets and, and, and it's, it's a great feeling. I'm, I'm able to, you know, for so long, it's like you're out on the road and it's like, I'm, I'm paying to do every show and you're, and you know, it's, it's a total grind and it'll wear on you. You wonder, man, how long can I do this for? And it's still, you know, I'm still holding on to some of that right now. Um, where I really feel like, man, I'm just, I'm so close to, 
to just, you know, I want to get to that point. It's like, it's, music business is so finicky. It's so fickle, man. I mean, you could, you, some kind of hacker, I could be forgotten about by next year. That's at least how I feel. It's maybe not true, but, you know, if I, if I was like, I'm just going to take a year off, probably, you know, wouldn't take long for, you know, kind of disappear into the depths of, mm-hmm. you know, music, but. Competitive. Um, yeah, it's competitive and, and I just, I feel like I'm just at that point where, you know, we're, we're out there grinding in a, in a van right now still. Um, playing a lot of dates. Uh, you know, I just want to keep, I want to keep it going. I just want to make a career out of this, you know. Um, at this point, I've worked, worked so hard at it for so many years and a lot, everybody around me has worked so hard in my career. I just want to keep it going, you know. I just want to make a career out of it and, and establish myself, really. Um, that's really the goal is to just have a career where I feel like I'm established. All right, there ain't no kicking me out of this now, you know. Um, so, that, I mean, and that, there's, there's definitely stepping stones I want to go to. The Houston Rodeo is, is a big one for me. Dude, that, you listening to, like, Parker tell his mm-hmm. Houston Rodeo story, I mean, you can, especially the people that actually come from Texas. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's the mecca, right? It's playing that, the Houston And, and I grew up going. Yeah. You know, as a kid, I mean, I got to go. I mean, we went every year, and that was always so big for us growing up. So, I mean, that would, that's the one that I think I'd really be like, yep, here we go. Boom. Billy Bob's was a big one. Yeah. Billy Bob's and, and the Opry were big ones for me. You know, hometown and then playing the Opry. And I've gotten to do those. And so, yeah, now I guess I'm looking towards what's next. But, yeah, just to keep this thing going. You know, I'm, I'm at a good point, though, because I feel like – and I never want to really lose that. I've talked to some guys about this, too, some, you know, older guys. It's like that, that kind of hunger, you know, you have, especially early on as an artist, of like, i got to make it. You know, i gotta, I got I to yeah. make this happen. I don't, I don't, I don't want to ever lose that, you know, and there's still, I mean, you think Cody Johnson sitting back there going, you know, no, you know, I don't really, I don't really want to work that hard anymore. You know, no, that dude is every day he wakes up and he wants to, he's grinding at it, you know? So I, you know, I don't want to ever lose that feeling, but the hunger is real, you know, now. So I'm, you know, we're still, I'm climbing that wall and I'm starting to see the top, you know, starting to see kind of the, the upside of it, but. I so. love that. And you've got a few more shows with Cody, correct? Mm-hmm. And then are yeah. you are you doing your own headline tour? Or are you on one? I mean, yeah, we're, we're playing all over the place. Okay. We are on our Jukebox Songs World Tour right now, baby. We, we started out this year um, really going out. We went out to London or went out to all over Europe this, earlier this year for the C2C Festival. Went down to Australia, which is wild, too. I want to go back to Australia so bad. We were in Brisbane. And you look at the crowd there, and you would think you were in Texas. They love I mean, country music. And it's like real deal cowboys and cowgirls out there. I mean, they're real deal ranchers. And it's like, and they, and they like to have a good time. They like to throw down. And you would think you were, it, it's like a Texas crowd, man. It's awesome. I've heard. I, I don't think I could do it when it comes to going to Australia. Yeah. I don't think I could be on a plane that long, Drake. Well, we went from, we went from London to Australia. And Which that was, was brutal. Through Singapore. How many hours on a plane? To like two nine hour stretches. No chance. Yeah, it was rough. Nope. It was Even rough. like from Florida, I want to say there's one leg that's like 21 hour flight. It's like, dude, yeah. no chance I can be on a, a I can't sit still. It's a lot, man. It's a lot. But it was, I mean, yeah, we, we, we went out there to uh, Europe. We've been on the road with Cody, a couple more in Canada, a couple more dates with him in Canada. Um, and then, yeah, we're playing, we're playing shows kind of still all over. We're going back now, which I'm excited. We're going back to Europe uh, here, like, next week. Um, we've got some shows, you know, trying to test the waters. I've played the Sea to Sea Festival, a big festival over there for a couple of years now, and had some success over there um, and have never really played my own shows over there. But now we, we booked, you know, I think a night in London and then Manchester and then Glasgow, Scotland. And they went on sale when we were at the festival this year. They went on sale, and we had to add two more nights in London that are sold out. And now we upgraded Love both that. the other venues twice. It's like I've never experienced that kind of selling out before. You know, I've gotten to like you know sell out Billy Bob's and stuff like that, but like that kind of level of like, I mean, we got to upgrade and try to fit more people. We could we could upgrade again if we wanted to, but it just wouldn't be fair to you know, people who've already bought their tickets. So Dude, your it's, stock is rising, man. So it's I cool. It's, it's cool to see. And over there where I never really dreamed I could ever sell tickets, you know, it's crazy to see. And we get to go, we're going up to, um, 
Norway, um, and Finland and stuff like that. You so, coming down to Florida anytime soon? Or? I hope so. I hope so. I'm sure we'll be back around there. We're just we're we're going anywhere we can we yeah. can get in right now. Play music, yeah. Anywhere we can play music right now. We're anywhere anywhere we can drive the van. We're playing, baby. Are you when you're on stage and doing your set? I mean, is there any Elvis covers that oh, people yeah. can look forward to? Oh yeah. What, what's your favorite one to sing? We come out hot. We come out hot to Blue Suede Shoes. <sighs> we open the show with it. Well, and it's kind of like here lately. This this kind of leg of the like we started doing it earlier this year. It's more of kind of a statement kind of thing for me. It's like I open with an Elvis song and a George Strait song. Just like we kind of have a medley of those right off the bat. And it's been great because, especially with the Cody shows, getting a crowd that doesn't know who I am, I get to give them a little familiarity, you know, open up with those two two songs that they know. And all of a sudden it kind of opens up that door like, oh, okay, I, I kind of like this guy. So that it's kind of become a thing now too. And it's kind of a statement piece for me because I, that's my worlds are Elvis and George Strait. So kind of get to show that off but yeah we opened the show hot with those i love that i appreciate you coming on the thank show thank you for today, having man. me dude it's a lot of fun this has been fantastic just to get to know who you are and i mean if there's anything i can ever do you know how to get a hold of me but yeah. i know you're for... a golfer when you go golfing how did you know i was a golfer i know you're a golfer yeah i've listened i've listened to the show i know okay i like to you do you play you're my, golf you're my, oh yeah i played in high school yeah. i played in high school i played a little bit in college and uh I'd love to play. Where, I mean, have you played any cool courses? Where would you? We'll play wherever you want. I play out here. I play at Greystone. Yeah, out in Dixon. Um, how about my place? How many shots are you giving me on the course? Are I don't you, know. How good handicap? of a golfer are you? I'm sitting at a three five right now. Okay. Yeah, you're gonna beat me. What are you sitting at? I'm sitting at like an eight right now. Dude, we need to go tee it up. Yeah. God, I wish we like somebody would have told us that. I could have brought my clubs yeah. or something. I'm, I'm, I'm on that van. The van life does not is not inducive for golf. Yeah. The bus life is. You bus keep lines. on mentioning that, Drake. I mean, that that right there needs to be the first. We got to get you in a bus. I mean, <laughs> hey, my golf game needs it, dude. You got to carry the clubs around. <laughs> my golf game needs it bad. <laughs> it's so funny, man. I'm telling you, all these all of these uh, girls and and guys in the country music scene, they love playing golf on the road. Such a yeah. cool thing. Get, it's a great way to get out. Yeah, you know, when you're everywhere has a golf course. Every city you go to has a golf course, and it's just a great way to get out. It's just fun. Golf is great. It's, it's a great, great sport. Game. It's a great sport. I wish I would have taken it more seriously in high school. I never really. I was. I always. You were too busy dressing up as Elvis. Exactly. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. We had a great team. <laughs> we had a we had a great team in high school, but I was. Sometimes I was. I was the fifth man every now and then. You know, when the fifth man would get sick or something. But uh, I was like JV. But I, after high school, I really fell in love with the sport. I and, love that and man. And really just became. I became a really good golfer after that because. I was enjoying it. I was actually, you know, I would go out there in high school and get mad that I wasn't breaking par. And there's, I, it's like, dude, you got to practice first. Yeah. You know, I was out there being a punk. I mean, the eight, an eight's good. And we're actually hosting a golf tournament uh, here in a couple months, and we'll get you the invite. I think Come we're going to do it at Hermitage. If I'm playing a lot, I can, I can, I can, I can get up there. I can, I can, I can, I can play. If I'm playing a lot, I can get that handicap down. But I just haven't been playing a lot. So challenge accepted. Yeah. Keep kicking ass in life, man. I'm, I'm proud of you. I look forward to watching you grow. And thanks for tuning in today. We got to finally confirm Elvis is no longer with us. It took <laughs> us a while to confirm that. But as always, like, <laughs> comment, share, subscribe. Do whatever you had to do to be like a farmer. <laughs>